Welcome to the third day of action here at the Montalibretti Nations Cup for eventing. This is the first of eight legs taking place this year and today it is cross country day. These riders have had two fantastic days of dressage so far but now it's all about cross country and uh, having to negotiate Eric Winter's cross country track. Now we have six minutes of cross country track for these riders to jump. 30 jumping efforts, 17 numbered fences, and they will come up thick and fast.
Bianca. The number four, Sucia Bostari Bois. Well, welcome to the third day of action here at the FEI Nations Cup in Monte Libretti, the first leg of eight taking place throughout the year. Now, we had two fantastic days of dressage on Thursday and Friday, and it was a very good day indeed yesterday for the home nation, as they're currently out in front individually, Evelina Batoli leading the pack individually the only rider to go sub 30 29.9 is her score can she stay on it today we'll have to wait and see and in the team competition it was a very good time indeed for spain spain currently out in front 103 is their score 100.3 i should say italy close behind in second on 103.2 and it's switzerland 
in third and France rounding out the uh, team placings. But we're going to get underway very shortly with today's action. It is cross country day. These riders have to negotiate the course designed by uh, Eric Winter. Eric, of course, the designer of uh, Badminton Horse Trials. Six minutes exactly is uh, the optimum time around this track. Now, the uh, average clear rate over past four star shorts here at Monte Libretti is 62% pretty close to the average for uh, most four star shorts that average 68 percent so a six minute optimum time 3420 meters of course to negotiate 30 jumping efforts but 17 numbered fences they will come up thick and fast out on uh, this course and we'll have our first rider out the box very shortly our first rider coming forward will be from Spain and in fact it was a rider that led the dressage for a large part of the first day of competition until uh, fellow uh, Spanish rider Carlos Diaz Fernandez ended up taking the lead after day one and he held that lead for a very very large chunk of time until uh, one of our last sections of dressage yesterday when uh, Evelina Batoli Fiji de Meliz came in and produced a stunning test of 29.9 like we say the only rider to go at sub 30 but we have some very experienced combinations coming forward today olympians five star riders but we also have some very exciting young talent to keep an eye on keep an eye on the likes of matilde piovani for italy born west combination who have come up through the junior and young rider ranks together making their mark now at the four-star level and doing a superb job indeed. They sit fifth overnight after dressage on 32. This leaderboard is incredibly tight. Our leader out at front, I would say 29.9, fifth place there, Mathilde and Vaughan West on a 32. So it really is all to play for out on cross country. These riders pick up 0.4 of a time penalty for every second they're over the optimum time. So time is going to be a very, very important factor here. Six minutes at optimum time. On average, only 4% of riders come clear inside the time. But uh, we are now underway. And our first rider to join us out on track in this Montalabretti Nations Cup four-star. Coming forward for Spain is Esteban Benitez Ballet. And Utura AA 35 1, like we say, a combination who held the lead for a large chunk of our dressage. Here's our uh, start list on the, the ones to keep an eye on. This is the order that they'll be coming in. The likes of Luke Chateau coming forwards, Benjamin Massey, Bill Levitt, their 12th rider to come forward, the uh, Australian Olympian. So we have a real, real class uh, field coming forward. On cross country date, but Esteban Benitez Valle Utura AA 35 1 doing a great job indeed in the uh, early sections of the course. Over the hedge at three, just taking the turn round to this kennel at four A, B, and C. Very nicely done. The first combination to come up on course at fence four. Take that swing back. Bit of a gallop now as they head down towards the uh, cottage at 5A and B. Another combination. These two offset houses made that look very, very easy indeed. And what a lovely combination we have to uh, kick the cross country off here in Monte Libretti. These are the trailblazers you're looking for because the cross country really is a highlight for this combination. They excel in this phase, having only ever had one cross country jumping penalty internationally. That really is a superb record and you can see they are just eating up this course so far nicely over the Oxa at seven. They've had multiple top five finishes at the four-star level. 
Well, let's see if they can make it another one this weekend. They're sat in 11th after dressage. Actually, Esteban Benitez Valley had a fantastic uh, day of dressage yesterday as well. As his second ride is up into joint fifth place. So nearly has two horses in the top ten. Not bad going at all. So straight uh, through that first water combination. No trouble at all over the angled hedges. To make the way around to the uh, log ditch here. And swiftly kicking on. Now for this uh, combination, we've got the vertical going in, over the ditch, out over the wishing well. Hop, skip and a jump and swiftly through that, not wasting a second at all. Now for the second of the water complexes. Big jump in. Well, as Esteban makes his way around the course, we're now joined by our next rider, the first to go for Italy as part of the Italian team. It is uh, Fosco Girardi and Euphori. Euphori owned by uh, Fosco himself. Another combination to post a good dressage score, 34 on the uh, first day of dressage. Sat in 12th place overnight. As they're kicking on down to fence five, a bit of a gallop as they make their way down to those houses. At the four star level, the time is normally quite tight, so these riders looking to make up every second that they can whilst they're out on course. Combination who were 12th here last year in the Nations Cup have a little bit of a stagger before they jump that open brush, but uh, they are clear, and that's what matters through those red and white flags. Off they go. We've seen a few of them now, but a combination who came up through the junior and young rider ranks together really built that connection when these horses and riders have been together for such a long time and come up through those youth ranks. You can really see the connection that the horse and riders have. They really understand one another. And a huge gallop on Euphori. Just setting up now to uh, fence eight. This looks like heading for home now. Esteban Benitez Valley. Utura AA 35-1. Now we've said a combination that excel in this phase and they have so far, they've done a superb job round this course, made it look very effortless indeed. Over the Oxer, just one left for them as they take that turn back to the final fence to complete their round. Well, a very useful score indeed for Spain who were out in front in the team competition after dressage. Combination who are sat in 11th individually. I'm sure they'll be absolutely delighted with that round and that will fill the rest of the competitors with confidence. It's always nice when you have a trailblazer go out and make the course look as easy as Esteban just did. Well, we're on to France now and it's the turn of Luc Chateau now joining us. Ego de Cabane out on course. Owned by Laurie Sudre. Round they head now to the brush at fence three. And then, of course, the first combination coming up at fence four. This course designed by uh, Eric Winter. Now, just taking that turn to this house. Big jump over the house. Just easily stepping off that drop. Found their line and over the other roll top, making that look very easy indeed. Mm -hmm. 
Combination have had a couple of uh, top 20 finishes at the four star level, sat in 37th overnight with a 41.7 in the first phase. Some really nice elements of their dressage test coming through, just unfortunately, tension did creep in, which uh, unfortunately popped that score a little bit higher than they maybe will have liked. However, uh, enough about the dressage, it's all about today the, the cross country as they make their way down to this. Uh, open ditch fly on over that and the scores are so tight on the leaderboard that uh, this could be a very influential phase time is going to be an important factor today And talking of time, we have a time in for our first rider, Esteban Benitez Valley, Utra AA 35 1. No jumping penalties. Complete the course six minutes and uh, seven seconds, that optimum time of six minutes. So pick up 2.8 time penalties, total of 36.6 is their two phase score. They drop to 16th. But of course, uh, everybody else is yet to complete. Or very smoothly through the first of the water complexes there for Luc Chateau. Now for this final combination. Easily through that for the first of the Italians. Fosco Girardi, Euphoria, just one fence left for them. Looked like a very good round indeed as Luc Chateau heading to the second water complex on this course. 30 jumping efforts, 17 numbered fences. They really do come up very fast for these riders. They've got to be uh, thinking all the time. Nicely over the skinny in the middle of the water and out over the other side. Luke, of course, such an experienced rider, 12 foot the uh, Europeans back in 2021 and through Budor Shamho. As we have another rider join us from Spain, their uh, second rider coming forward now. It is Antonio Hudo Caro and Duque HSM. They bring forward a score of 36 from the first phase, 16th after dressage. And uh, off to a good start so far. Antonio, who competed at the World Championships in Pretoni back in 2022. He started the, well, the year very well indeed, already picking up a fourth place at a four-star short. Carefully off that step. It's given them time to line up for the kennel at the bottom there. And then their chance to gallop as they head down to the beautiful open ditch. So we have a time in for Fosco, Girardi and Euphoria. They complete the course in 6 minutes and 20 seconds, so 8 time penalties to add there. So a total of 42 for Fosco, Girardi and Euphoria.
So we, we caught a glimpse there of Luc Chateau completing and uh, now we have Antonio Sudocaro and uh, Duque now. At the first of these waters over the horse and they've got to find their line for this angled horse on the way out. Easily done. Now riders could choose to ride a bit of a wiggle and jump that a little bit straighter but uh, these riders are looking to save every second that they can, taking it on the angle and doing it very well indeed. Again swiftly over the uh, open brush. Now down to this uh, vertical combination, this vertical ditch and then out over the well. Having a little bit of that half stride coming out over the well, but just shows the horse and rider's uh, belief in one another. Antonio said go, and off they went indeed. Sometimes cross country is just about making it happen. Big jump into that water. Now they've got to find their line to these snails. Very nicely done. The time is in for Luc Chateau. Six minutes and four seconds, so 1.6 time penalties to add there. 43.3 the final score, and they go into 39th position. So still yet to have anybody make that time of six minutes. We have had people close indeed. Luc Chateau, the fastest there at six minutes and four seconds. But what will we see from our next rider coming forwards? Coming forwards for Italy it is Alessio Proya and Gatto Saltadu. Combination who were top 30 in the Nations Cup here last year. As we turn our attentions back to DK Antonio Sidokaro. Well, Gata Salta do looking very keen indeed as they make their way down to these uh, offset houses. Very swiftly through that combination. A very bold jump there over the open ditch. Alessio Proya finished at 2023 in a good style, just outside the top 10 in the four star long here at Monte Libretti. Well, over the final combination, knocking the flag, but uh, over that and just two fences left now for Antonio and Duque HSM. Another Spanish rider home would be great indeed. I say Spain who were out in front after the first phase in the team competition. Boldly through the first two elements of the water. Very nicely out over the horse A, A, B and C. Down they go to the log ditch at nine. Mm. 
round this combination here at 10. That railing popping out of the ditch found that line beautifully two strides out over the well. Combinations like that could be a little bit more difficult when you've got uh, a big horse like Gattas out to do, but Alessio riding very well indeed as they make their way around to their second water. There's a huge jump into that first into the water at the first element and then over the snails. So now the first of our riders coming forward for Switzerland. It is Najaminda, Victory Hope Tre, owned by Peter Attinger. It's a lovely big gelding. Making their way round now to the hedge at three. As you're a very experienced rider, part of the Swiss team at the Protoni World Championships back in 2022 and the Europeans last year, but coming towards the latter stages of the track so far, it is Alessio Proya and Gatto Saltadu. Lovely big gallop on this horse. Really using these uh, gallop stretches to open up. Naja Minda comes round. Victory Hope Tre. Just uh, regaining some balance before these offset houses. Really pushed for the uh, two strides between the two there. Combination uh, who had success at Babaroko four star long last year, placing fifth there. 38.3 was their dressage score yesterday, currently sat in 23rd. So time in for Antonio Caro and Duque HSM. 6 minutes 32, so 12.6 time penalties to add there. Still the fastest time of the day, Luc Chateau, 6 minutes 4 seconds. That optimum time is of course 6 minutes. Very nicely done through the first water complex there. Nasha Minda, this gelding, victory hope today. Just finding their line round now to this open ditch. Fences like that can often be more, much more of a rider frightener than a horse frightener. We've seen all these horses so far today just eat up that fence. They come along in their big gallop and just take it in their stride. Well, she did very well indeed there because they had a big jump over the ditch. But her eyes were locked onto that well on the element C. Round to the suspended log here, this first element of our second water at fence 11. Nasha riding beautifully round this track so far. Bit of a gallop as they head up to the red and white with Hedge at 12. Six 
So our highest placed uh, completed rider at the moment, Esteban Benitez Valley. 36.6 was their uh, completed two-phase score. They held the lead in the dressage for a large chunk of the uh, first eight. Let's see how far they can work their way up the leaderboard today. Now this is a beautiful stretch of the course where the riders really just let the horses gallop. As we can see here, Najaminda making their way down towards fence 14. Coming to the latter stages now of this course, 17 numbered fences. This beautiful stretch of galloping track before they are faced with the white angles. So coming round now to the final combination on course number 15 these are angled corners Najaminda for uh, Switzerland Doing well there at that second element. Eyes on the third. Very nicely done indeed. Two from home now. Nigel Minda, victory, hope, throw. And we have a time for Alessio Proya and Gata Sel to do. They completed the course in six minutes and 20 seconds. So eight time penalties to add there. 46.8 is their uh, total two-phase score into 41st. You can see here this uh, wonderful cool-down area where all the horses just relax. Najaminda just completed her course. Off she gets and uh, the team will come and help her cool off victory, Hope Trey. So still not seen anybody make the time yet. We'll get Naja's time in very shortly. Six minutes that optimum time. 3,420 metres of cross country for these riders to negotiate. And so far it's been a fantastic start to cross country. The course has been beautifully prepared. You can just see how green that grass is looking and how well it's been riding for these horses and riders. True testament to the whole team here at Montelebrati. So we're just waiting for Naja's time to come in to see if she can creep ahead of Esteban Benitez Valley. Like we say, the fastest round the track so far today it has been uh, Luke Chateau. Six minutes and four seconds. However, we have another rider coming forwards for Spain now. Now they've got uh, two scores on the board for their team. Let's see if they can make it a third. Francisco Gavino Gonzalez, Ultra Source Del Cerro, 35. Ultra Source Del Cerro, owned by Francisco himself. Francisco, incredibly experienced rider, completed as an individual at the Tokyo Olympics. Ultra Source uh, Del Cerro stepped up to four star last year. And a huge jump over the uh, hedge at three. They bring forward the dressage score of 42. Sat in 38th overnight. A little bit of a sticky jump over that first element. And unfortunately having to think about this step. So uh, I believe that will be 20 penalties picked up there. But it is all down to the fence judges. They're the ones with uh, the final decision and the ground jury, but unfortunately taking a bit of a dislike into that step at fence four. So we just wait and see 
what uh, Francisco decides. It looks like he's decided to retire and uh, save Ochsal del Cerro for another day. I'm sure they'll be at, at home practicing some steps, but uh, just not to be today for Francisco Gavino Gonzalez for Spain. So we have a time in for Najaminda Victory Hope Trey. They complete the course in 6 minutes and 21 seconds. So picking up 8.4 time penalties, but no jumping penalties. So a total of 46.7 is their two-phase score. Into 40th at this current stage of uh, competition. But we are in the uh, very early stages of competition. For Spain Esteban Benitez Ballet Utara out in front on the, the two phase score of 36.6. The best of the completed so far. That'll be a very useful score for the Spanish team who were out in front after dressage. 3.1 penalties out in front after that first phase. Francisco just making his way back after retiring out at fence four. 17 numbered fences out on this course, but 30 jumping efforts. So uh, the fence is coming up quite quickly for these uh, horses and riders. The track has rode very well so far. But we're still yet to see anybody make that optimum time of uh, six minutes. The closest we've had is uh, Luke Chateau. They of course complete the course six minutes four seconds. That's the best that we've had. We have some very speedy riders yet to come, so I'm sure we will have uh, somebody inside that optimum time. This beautiful course designed by uh, Eric Winter. Well, we have to see uh, what we see from our next rider, Pietro Magellino, joins us now for Italy. Coming forward with Ferrandil de Mera. Combination who stepped up to the four star level last year. Best placing so far at the four star level was eighth place in Linear, four star long. Well, very boldly indeed off the first two elements at fence four. Swiftly over that element C, not hanging around at that first combination. Horses and riders have the first three fences just to find their rhythm, get them into the flow of the cross country. And fence four is their first combination that they have to face. They have a bit of a gallop down to these offset cottages. Down at five. Got those two strides beautifully. And then this lovely big open ditch. Another one of these fences that looks very big and imposing, but actually rides very well. Bit of a reminder needed as they approach that from uh, Pietro. But uh, they were clear. Now taking this left handed turn back over the Oxa. See the ox there on those uh, Mims clips. Lots more of these fences out on cross country now with those Mims safety devices, just keeping the horses and riders' safety paramount when they go cross country. 
Now to the first of two water complexes on this uh, FEI Eventing Nations Cup track at Monte Libretti. Well, uh, Firindel de Mera looking very keen indeed so far in this first section of the course. Having to just say, uh, hold up, listen here. But they're making a great job of the course so far. Round now to this open ditch. Lovely big jump over that. Let's see how they uh, negotiate this combination here at 10. Well, very, very good job indeed. You can see them saving every second that they can. Big jump into the water to find the snail. Easily done. And out over that second snail there. Riders have a little bit of a uh, gallop now before they head to the top end of the course. At the top end they have the uh, red and white with the hedge here. <laughs> well there's Pietro at the top end of the course with another rider join us at the start now. Philip Ryan joins us and um, Mansara for uh, Switzerland. Another combination he stepped up to the four star level at the back end of last year. In fact, finished their 2023 season here in Monte Libretti in the four star short to pick up fourth. So, familiar with the venue, which is always great. Coming forward with a dressage score of 34.7, so sat in 13th overnight in a great position. Let's see what they can do out on this Eric Winter track here today. Approaching the uh, first combination at fence four. Carefully off that step, but uh, found the kennel at the bottom very nicely. Now their chance to kick on down to these uh, offset cottages at five. Well, if they can uh, get around this course clear here today and hopefully in a speedy time and put them in a great position because they're very good jumpers on the final day. So ones to keep an eye on tomorrow. Because they posted a good dressage score, 34.7. A bit of a uh, kick and a flap to make sure they uh, got that stride there over the big open uh, brush ditch at six but they made it happen and sometimes that's what cross country is all about sometimes it is just a case of making things happen swiss team sat in third after dressage so a good cross country round could be key for the team here we've had Najaminda uh, home already As philip ryan heads down now to the first water Now we see him choosing to find his line, opt a little bit straighter line out over that C element. We've seen a few riders take on a slightly more abrupt angle, but it's whatever is best for your horse. These riders know their horses inside out. They know the lines they need to take to make sure they are clear between these red and white flags. And it's clear rounds that count.
adding in an extra stride out over the well, but it doesn't matter, they're clear and kicking on now to the second water. We have a time for Alessio Prairie and Gatto Sal to do. Clear cross country, six minutes and 20 seconds. So uh, another one in that 6.20, so eight time penalties to add there. 46.8 there, two phase score. They're heading to show jumping. Just behind Najaminda, who we saw earlier, sat in 39th. Well, underway for France, it is Benjamin Massey, Figaro Fomroy. Fastest rider of the day so far has come from France. What will we see here from Benjamin Massey? Will he be our first rider inside the time? We'll have to wait and see. Well, he's in a great place after the first phase. Eighth place, 32.6 is his dressage score. <laughs> Figaro Fomroy, just a nine-year-old gelding who started his international career back in 2021, so has swiftly moved up the levels. First four-star was at the back end of last year in Linya four-star long when they placed sixth. So relatively new to the level, but it's been a successful start to their four-star career. And long may it continue. It's been a successful start here at Monte Libretti, like we say, in eighth place at the moment after the first phase. Heading down now to the offset houses at fence five. It's got those two strides beautifully. As we see in the latter stages of the final combination there, it is Philip Ryan and Sara for uh, Switzerland. Great for the Swiss team to have two riders home already. Just the uh, final fence left for them. Looking very, very pleased indeed, and quite rightly so. It looked like a lovely round as he completes. You see Benjamin Massey there making his way round, having just jumped the open ditch and oxer. Heading round now to the first of the water combinations. Nicely over element A. B finding their line out over C. Very nicely done indeed. No trouble at all there over the combination at 10. Looking like a super ride for this uh, young combination. As we see there, that's Bill Levitt waiting in the start box to go. No trouble for that second water eating this course up so far. Benjamin Massey there. Figaro from Roy well, Now it is the turn of Bill Levitt. Habitha's AC just being counted down in that start box and off they go. 33.4 is their dressage score. Ninth after dressage. Huge jump over the first fence. These first few fences just there to help the horses and riders get into the flow of the course, get their eye back in. And then, of course, the first combination that will come up at fence four. 
this uh, an experienced combination. Another big jump to get their uh, course underway. They were sixth in the Nations Cup here at Monte Liberati last year. The year started well also here in Monte Liberati, second in the three star short earlier on this month. So, uh, have been around this uh, cross country course, obviously not this exact cross country course because they were in the three star short earlier on in the month, but uh, are familiar with the venue and the tracks. So a time in for uh, Philip Ryan and then Sara. Not a bad time at all. Six minutes, nine seconds. So 3.6 time penalties. Nothing to add on the uh, jumping penalties. 38.3, the best of the Swiss so far. So they'll be really, really chuffed with that. Into 19th place. A little bit close to that first element there for uh, Bill. But uh, really pushing for those two strides on the way out. Got exactly that. And down they head to this uh, open ditch brush. Big jump there. You can hear these riders' watches beeping. Just letting them know when they're at certain minute markers. And it's very, very important because the time is tight here today. Yet to have a rider inside that optimum time of six minutes. So like we say, Philip Ryan and Ansara, superb job there for Switzerland, the time in, and they're into 19th place, but second on our completed riders, out in front on our completed cross-country riders, Esteban Banitas, Ballet, Utara, AA 35-1, a combination that led the dressage for a large chunk on Thursday. Will we see them in the lead after cross country? We'll have to wait and see. They're there at the moment, but we've got a long way to go. Bill Levitt and uh, Hubbard's AC at this first water. Beautiful line out the other side. Big pats down the neck. Yeah, Bill very chuffed with that. As they head round to the log ditch here at nine. Just making sure he gets a good turn round to this. This log on that slight angle, making the ditch look a little bit more imposing, but uh, taking it all in their stride. Well, a time in for Benjamin Massey, Figaro Fonroy. The French are fast indeed, clear. Six minutes and six seconds, so close but not quite in that optimum time. 2.4 time penalties to add. 35 is their two-phase score and they're into 10th place. So our best finishing score so far. They go into the lead on the completed riders, but 10th place as it stands on the whole leaderboard. So a superb score for the French as part of that Nations Cup team. France, who were in fourth after dressage. But that could be a very, very useful score indeed. French riders are known to be fast, and it's uh, paying off. But now it's to Spain, and to the man who led the dressage for 90% of the competition, Carlos Diaz Fernandez, Tahe CP2110. He produced a beautiful test on the uh, first day 30.5 was their score and they held that lead until our last section of dressage yesterday when it was of course uh, Evelina Batoli who uh, snuck in front there with 29.9 it is so close so a good round here today could put them back on top we we'll have to wait and see but it is also very important for the Spanish team who were out in front after dressage had one uh, rider retire so uh, they need a good round here from Carlos Diaz Fernandez Tahe this really really elegant horse making light work of the early stages of this uh, Eric Winter track 
Well, they uh, have a history of being very good in this phase, so let's hope it continues. They only had one cross-country jumping penalty in their international career, and that was at their first ever international run. So it's been a while. It's been a long string of clears. And let's hope we can add another one to that string here today at Montelabrati. They completed in three Nations Cup last year. Had a little bit of a sticky jump there over that uh, open ditch. Bit of a look down into the ditch, but uh, they were clear the other side, kicking on now to the Yoxa. Yep, confidence regained and they're swiftly off to the uh, first water complex. Like I say, the combination who competed in three Nations Cups last year and have never been outside the top 20 in those three last year. So uh, maybe we could start 2024 off in the same manner, sat in second overnight. Huge jump over that element A, doing a really good job of just slipping the reins and allowing Tahe her head just to uh, balance very nicely out the other side. Well, that was cross-country riding there, just going with the flow and reacting to what happens underneath you. Interesting to see how they jump this. A little bit of a staggered jump. Was expected after they had a bit of a look down into that first open ditch. Often if they have a little bit of a look to the first, you can kind of expect them to be a bit hesitant when the second time that comes around. They've either gained confidence from it or feel a bit unnerved, but super duper riding there from uh, Carlos Diaz Fernandez, making this happen out on this uh, four star track. As we see our next rider to join us on course shortly, that was Emiliano Portali. But uh, now we're back and looking bold indeed. Carlos Diaz Fernandez, Tahe. <laughs> this gelding owned by Campigro. Heading up to the top end of this course now. Well, as they're about midway through. Emiliano Portali joins us now, Scuderia 1918 future. Lovely uh, jump over the first fence as they're underway with the dressage score of 31.7. Great score in fourth overnight after the uh, first phase. So they'll be looking to keep their foot down on the accelerator to stay up in that uh, top five position. Well, the, this venue and this cross country, definitely a happy place for Emiliano Portali. The rider with the highest number of cross-country jumping clears at the venue. They've jumped clear seven out of nine times around the four-star short track. Let's hope we can add to that tally today. Emiliano, who served as a team selector for the Italian national pony team. Finished just outside the top 30 at the Europeans last year. So an incredibly experienced rider. Very nicely through those offset houses at five. So time in for uh, Bill Levitt. Habithus AC. No jumping penalties, complete the course 6 minutes and 40 seconds. So uh, 16 time penalties to add there, 49.4 the two phase score and into 41st. So Emiliano Portali 
Great start to this course. Lovely big gallop. Looks like one of their boots is broken, but uh, it's not affecting them at the moment. Just a little bit of uh, string or rope flapping around. As they head round to this first water. Beautiful bold riding there from uh, Miliano, really making sure they kept up that uh, good gallop throughout the water to hit those strides as they make their way down now to the log ditch at nine. So a beautiful shot over that, just cruised over. Great riding through that combination there at 10. Round they head to the second water combination on this course that has a, a big suspended log as they uh, jump in. Very bold over that first element. This is where riders got to be quick to sit up, keep their eyes on these snails. We have a new starter underway and uh, it is the turn of Felix Vogue. Car Tanya joins us. Combination sat in third place overnight. 31.1 was their score. One of the most experienced combinations in the field. Fifteenth at Badminton last year. Fourteenth at uh, Protoni World Championships. But Felix himself, of course, a five-star winner, having won Le Moulin back in 2022 on Calero. Well, a super job over that first combination. Well, it could be a very important round indeed because they've moved up to second so far in the uh, individual standings because the time is in for Carlos Diaz Fernandez and Tahe CP 21.10. They complete the course 6 minutes 17 seconds, so uh, no jumping penalties, but that's 6.8 time to add. That drops them down into 15th place with a two phase score of 37.3. So then they also go into third on our uh, completed individual standings. Benjamin Massey and Figaro Fonroy currently leading the uh, pack of completed riders. 35 is the completed score to beat. So Felix Vogg, Cartagena, if they can produce a fast round they could go into the lead on our completed riders. And that would be a very useful score indeed for the uh, Swiss team. Down to this uh, first water. Oh, big stride and a big jump out over the uh, second element, found their line over the third. Kicking on down to the uh, log ditch at nine.
So we're still yet to have anybody make the time. Six minutes is the optimum time. Six minutes, uh, four seconds is the closest that we've had. Wow, a time is in that for Italy's Miliano Portali Scuderia 1918 future. No driving penalties. Six minutes, 14 seconds it took to complete the course. So 5.6 time penalties to add there. 37.3 is their two-phase score. So the same score as Carlos Diaz Fernandez. However, they were closer to the optimum time. So they sneak ahead and go into 14th on our overall standings. And uh, into third on the completed standings. But now uh, another rider coming forward for France. As part of their Nations Cup team, there's uh, Matthew Shomba and Big Boss Mello. Combination, who were sat in 33rd overnight, 40.2 was their dressage score. Big Boss Mello owned by uh, Gerolev and Nicholas Mara. combination that excels in both jumping phases. Never had a cross-country jumping penalty in their uh, international career. Let's keep that streak alive today as they head down to the offset houses at Fence 5. And they're ones to take note of tomorrow as well from uh, 21 international runs. They've jumped clear 19 times on uh, the final day. So ones to watch tomorrow, if they can be close to that optimum time today, that will uh, really rocket them up the lead leaderboard. And effortlessly over that ditch brush at six. little bit of a uh, near trip there on a bit of a deeper section of ground but uh, they stayed in balance kept galloping down to this first water And unfortunately, having a run out there at Element C, they were just having a little bit of a conversation on the way out. They weren't quite listening. It was Big Boss Mello not quite listening there to uh, Matthews. They come round for their second attempt. No trouble on the second time of asking. They just quite, quite weren't quite on the same page on that uh, final element. On that first time of asking. So that will be 20 penalties to add there. So uh, really unfortunate for the uh, combination from France. But there we saw our next rider waiting to go, Raphael Manfred Lozano, master quality. Both of Raphael rides uh, this weekend are four star first timers. So uh, it will be great to see how they tackle this track here at Monte Libretti. They were here earlier in the month, placed ninth in the uh, three star short. So familiar with the venue. So maybe a uh, first four star 
for this horse, but uh, Raphael, a very, very experienced rider. Competed in the Tokyo Olympics. And here to guide this gelding around this track. It's just starting to settle into the track as uh, they're over the first two fences as they approach the hedge at three. And you can just see them there complete that uh, first combination at fence four, no trouble at all, over the roll off the step and over the roll at the bottom there. Down they head to these offset houses at five. A little bit of an awkward twist over the uh, first element, but they got the two strides and made it happen. Coming out the other side. And down now to this big open ditch brush, which they cruise on over. Very nicely uh, done indeed. Combination who are in 18th overnight with a Drassel score of uh, 37. And just the first of two rides here this weekend for Raphael. So he's just taking his time to set up for this first water. Lovely jump in. A little bit close to element B, but they are clear. And unfortunately, another one caught out by element C there. So I come round for a, a second attempt. Just not quite reading the question. This uh, young horse first time at the level. No, it's very hard on that second time of asking and uh, Raphael deciding to uh, call it a day and just uh, save him for another day because on that second time of asking they didn't have the red flag they knocked it out when they had that first run out and it can just be very difficult to uh, re-approach when the fence is like that but uh, made the wise decision just to uh, save him for another day and head on home what a shame the first half of that course looked uh, really nice for this uh, combination, this young horse. Well, a time in for Felix Vogg and uh, Cartania, who we saw a little bit earlier on. They were in third after dressage, however, took a steady round on the cross country, clear 6 minutes 35 seconds, so 14 time penalties to add, 45.1 is their final score and they drop to uh, 36. So now we turn our attentions to uh, Fabio Fanniciotti and Bolt MCR. Bolt MCR owned by Renault Marie Caroline. 39.6 is their dressage score. They were sat in 29th after the first phase. Great job at the uh, first combination at Fence 4. Fabio Fanniciotti two rides here this weekend 
with Bolt MC Army. We're just outside the top ten here in November last year in the four star short. Very nicely over the uh, offset houses. This combination were in 29th overnight. Can easily climb the leaderboard if they can post a uh, fast clear round. Fabio will be coming again later with his second ride, Suta Go Georges, who they were sat in uh, 27th after dressage, 39.4. So two horses very close to each other on the leaderboard. In fact, uh, I believe just point two between the pair of them. And there you can hear the cheers from the home crowd. Great to see them all packed here, looking and watching upon the uh, first water. First water coming up here at eight. Very swiftly through all three elements. Round they head now to this uh, log ditch at nine. Jumped well so far today. Very nicely through that combination at ten. The rail ditch out over the well. It's the second water on course now at eleven. Lovely big bowl jump in. Can they keep their line to the snails? Very easily done. We also have a time in for Matthew Shambar, big boss Mello. They did unfortunately pick up the 20 penalties at the first water at element C on the way out. They complete the course 6 minutes 40 seconds, so 36 time penalties to add there. Total of 76.2. As we have another rider joining us on course, another one for Italy. As we're into our individual sections now, it is Mattia Luciani and Cantalotto. Cantalotto owned by the Silver Oak Real Estate Company. Another rider with two horses here today, Mattia. First coming forward with Cantalato. Combination who was sat in 22nd overnight, 38.1 is their first phase score. Nicely uh, through that first combination at fence four. This pair picked up at ninth in the four star short here, the back end of last year. Heading down to these offset cottages. They've rode well so far today and continue to do so. And they got their two strides very nicely into this uh, open ditch brush now. Very bold jump over that. We've seen a couple of horses just have a little bit of a look down into the ditch and have a little bit of an uncertain jump, but that was not the case there for Cantalato. And uh, Mattia Luciani. You can see from the hoof prints these riders taking that inside line over that oxer, trying to save every second possible. 
as I believe Fabio Faniciotti and Bolt MCR cross the finish line to complete their round. So we'll have a time for them very shortly. Nicely over the first two elements. Got in close, but they were clear out over sea. We've seen a couple of horses caught out there at that final element. That's uh, not the case there for Cantolato. Doing a uh, superb job so far as they head on down now to this uh, log ditch at nine. As expected, jumped that very nicely. Doing a superb job through the combination there at 10. Had a big jump over the ditch, but uh, found their line out the other side with no issues at all. Drifting ever so slightly to the left there, but uh, out through the second water and really kicking on as they head to the top end of the course there. As Mattia further on up on the course, we have a new starter joining us, Bontua Samrin and Bigrim Billy Emily. Combination produced a, a very nice test yesterday. The first time at the level for Bigram Biliomi. Dressage score of 33.7. They were sat in 10th overnight. Not bad at all for a four star first timer. I know there was the odd mistake or two in their test because uh, they can produce a very, very low dressage score at the two star, three star level. And I definitely think that they're. Uh, set to produce similar types of scores when they're established at this four star level so wishing best of luck uh, around this uh, four star track here today Monte Libretti Contois became the first rider to uh, represent Thailand in eventing at the World Championships when he competed at the World Championships in Bretoni back in 2022 Also part of Team Thailand that uh, won the team gold medal at the 2019 Asian Championships. So loads of experience under his belt. Now just passing it on to this uh, four star first timer. And a lovely jump over that open ditch and brush. <laughs> So we see there heading round to uh, the first of the waters, Quanta Samran. Well, uh, it is Fabio Faniciotti and Bolt MCR heading for home. Big jump over element B. Find their line for the C. Very, very nicely done. This horse looking so confident around this uh, first section of the track. So a time in for uh, Fabio and Bolt MCR. Complete the course. No jumping penalties. 6 minutes 21 seconds. That's uh, 8.4 time penalties. Total score of uh, 48 into 37th position on the overall standings. Uh, 
as we see circling at the start another four star first timer for both rider and horse Amanda Breeditus and DHI Hacker we saw her fiance earlier on today Rafael Manfred Lozano didn't quite go to plan for his four star first timer but wait to see for his fiance however Quantois Samrin B. Grimm, Billy Elmi. Great progress so far as they work their way up to the top end of the course, out the box. It is Amanda and DHI Hacker for Sweden. Like we say, both horse and riders, first time at the level. If you want to say, uh, Raphael, who we saw earlier, took on. Uh, the ride for a few runs last year, whilst uh, Amanda had her daughter in May. So uh, a very successful 2023 for Amanda, the birth of her daughter, and uh, and then she also got engaged last year. Raphael popped the question, so uh, let's hope 2024 can be as good as 2023. I can imagine it's a very hard year to live up to. Good start. Come round now to this first combination. Skipping off that step, looking very confident. Found their line and off they go. Down they head to the offset houses at five. So, time in for Mattia Luciani Cantalotto. They uh, completed the course at 6 minutes 34, so no jumping penalties, 13.6 time. So, a total of 51.7 into 39th position. Big jump there over the open ditch and brush for Amanda. DHI Hacker looking very keen indeed. She's just happy to say, well, listen to me, that they're off. In fact, I believe there's been a bit of a change of order, and that uh, we are actually following Luke Chateau and Igo de Cabane. Dressage score of uh, 41.7. Sat in 37th overnight. making great progress so far looking uh, very keen indeed he's just having to say well take a little pull and make sure that uh, Igor de Cabane is listening Very straight indeed through the uh, second of the waters. Heading up to the uh, top section of the course. trouble at all that as they head down to this triple bar now uh, this is a young lady I'm going to keep an eye on because she produced a lovely test on uh, Thursday rising star in Italy 
Latilde Piovani and uh, Bourne West. They were sat in fifth place overnight. 32 was their uh, dressage score. Combination who have come up through the uh, young rider levels together and then have taken that step up to four star. Looks like she has had a little, little bit of trouble. I don't know if something's happened to her rein or her tack and looks like she is just trying to sort out what her issue has been. Looked like she was looking down at the bit or at the bridle but seems to have gathered herself. Is coming round to approach for this first combination at four. Doing very well to uh, make it to that final element with uh, long reins. Super bit of cross country riding. Now I believe this is uh, Luc Chateau coming to the end of his course. Riding uh, slightly out of order. But looked like a good round for them. Back with Matilde Pivani and uh, Bourne West. Combination who stepped up to this four star level last year. They uh, finished the year here at Monte Labrati in the four star short to place fifth. It's really great when these riders have these horses from the young rider level up to uh, the four star level. Some of them even then go on to five star. They really do become these uh, riders' horses of a lifetime. Until they're doing a good job so far. All the West looking uh, very keen in the head as they approach the fences. But she's just doing a good job of uh, managing it all and uh, managing him. Of course, when they've been together for a while now, they know each other inside out very boldly over the first two elements a little twist over the third but they're clear and that's what matters galloping down now to this uh, suspended uh, log ditch at nine no trouble there now how will they negotiate the combination at 10, the rail ditch and out over the well. Very nice over element A, skipped over that ditch, found the two strides and out over C, looking very easy indeed and looking like they're just settling into a rhythm now. Little bit of a less of a uh, communication needed before each fence able to just carry on in their nice rhythm. It does take some horses a few fences to settle into the cross country. And a huge jump out over that final element. As they're up to the top end of the course, our latest starter underway. Anna Baraka and Exclusif. 38.7 was their dressage score. And that was uh, good enough for 24th place overnight. This uh, gelding owned by Morgani Laura. Combination who finished just outside the top 20 at Stregom Nations Cup last year. And uh, clear of the first three fences on course. Well, a time in for uh, Contois Samran, Billy Elmi. Now, it does look like they've been given a 15 penalties, and that is awarded for uh, a missed flag at 15C. That's the final combination on course, those uh, corner combinations. 
So uh, they will have taken the flag down and the French judge will have given the 15, the 15 penalties from that. They complete the course 6 minutes, 16 seconds. So 21.4 the total penalties from the cross country. 55.1 is their two-phase score. They looked like they were having a really, really confident round, but unfortunately picking up that 15 penalties. You can hear just a little bit of encouragement there and uh, clear over the open ditch at six there for Anna and Exclusif. Getting in a little bit close to that oxer and she's looking back just to check that she didn't activate the uh, MIMS clips because if they're activated that is 11 penalties awarded to uh, the combination. But Exclusif very uh, clean and quick with the legs so it uh, doesn't look like the pin was activated. Let's head down to the first water. Still yet to have anybody make the optimum time. Six minutes the optimum time. Now a bit of a hesitant jump into element A. Really looking to keep the energy up as they approach B. Nicely done. Now for this third and final element that has caused a few issues, but uh, not the case there for Anna Baraka and Exclusif. Nicely done through the first of the waters. They have another one fast approaching, but uh, first they got to head round to the uh, log ditch at nine. Huge jump over that log ditch. And I just having to uh, relax her reins a bit and uh, go with the huge leap there from Exclusif. They've got time to uh, collect themselves and come round to this rail ditch well combination. Hesitant over the rail. Over the ditch, out over the well. Now I think as they're coming over that rail, Exclusif just having a bit of a look at the ditch further on. You could see they were a little bit hesitant as they came around the corner, but how will they cope with this second water? Well, a lovely jump in. And over the snail. And oh, unfortunately, not quite getting to that uh, third element, element C. So we'll pick up a 20 penalties there. So Anna Baraka exclusive. We'll see if they're going to come round for a second attempt or if she is going to retire. I'm not quite sure. Well, it looks like she's going to come round now for her second attempt. Just regaining herself. And unfortunately, uh, not quite happening on that second time of asking. These riders have uh, three chances at each fence, so uh, she may choose to call it a day now or come round for the all-important third attempt think she may uh, decide to retire. We'll wait and see for confirmation on that as Yaroslav Abik joined us on course with Maduk coming forward for the uh, Czech Republic. Big jump over element A off the step there at B trying to find the kennel at the bottom at C. Nicely done there. For the combination sat in 34th after dressage, 40.2 was their score. Maddock uh, completed around the Blenheim 8 and 9 year olds back in 2019, the four star there. That class, a real showcase for up and coming talent in the sport. Took a winner, three stars short last year, so uh, got some good experience under their belt as they head down to this open ditch at six. Cruise on over that, no trouble at all. Round they head to the Oxer at seven. Yeah, 
So we're just waiting for a time to come in for Mathilde Piovani and uh, Bourne West because uh, they were on a very smart score of 32 so it will be ones to look out for. But for now, Yaroslav Abik Maduk through the first of the waters. Riding on now down to the uh, Open ditch brush at nine. Lovely bowl jump over the uh, ditch brush. Looking like a confident start for this pair. Round they go to ten. The rail ditch and then out over the well. Just making the horses sit back, listen. Popped over all three elements, no trouble at all. So uh, currently out in front, Benjamin Massey, Figaro Fomroy. They're the best place of the riders who have completed cross country so far. They're at two phase score of 35. But what will we see from our uh, next rider coming forward? Coming forward for uh, Poland, Robert Paula and Tosca de Casnego. Combination who was sat in 14th overnight with 35.5 as their dressage score. Another one to finish their 2023 season here at Montalabretti last year. Finished just outside the top 15 in the four-star long. Well, the time is in for uh, Mathilde and uh, Bourne West. Another one to pick up a 15 penalties at uh, 15C. That's the final element of the uh, final combination on course. There's the three corners. So picked up a missed flag penalty there. Complete the course, 6 minutes 28. So 26.2 is the uh, cross-country penalties she picks up meaning her total turns to 58.2 and into 37th position. Well, Robert Tosca del Casnego going well so far in the early stages of the course. <laughs> Good round here could really move them up the leaderboard. They're in 14th overnight. Making their way down to the first of the waters, two waters on this uh, four star track designed by Eric Winter. Still yet to see a rider make the optimum time. Six minutes is that optimum time. Huge jump over element A there. Robert staying in perfect balance as they nip over B and find their line to C. C has caught a couple of horses out so far today. That's not the case for Robert and Tosca del Casnego. <laughs> Closest we've had to that optimum time was Luke Chateau. And Ego de Cabane clear six minutes and four seconds. Only 1.6 time there for uh, Luke. 
It's a very speedy round indeed. But we still have a fair few horses to go. Roughly just under 20 horses to go. So we could still have a rider inside that optimum time. Well, very boldly over the first element there at the water. Found the line for that snail. And out over sea. This is looking like a superb round so far for Robert Tosca del Casnego. Looking very, very much in their comfort zone. Riding very positively indeed. As our next rider joins us out on course for Sweden, Henrik Oldnevik and Zamef. Combination who were sat in 17th overnight, 36.9 was their uh, first phase score. They were just outside the top 20 in the Nations Cup here last year. We picked up a 10th place in the four star longest softball last year. So they have that four star experience under their belt. Currently sat in 17th. Can they uh, go better than last year and make it inside the top 20? We'll have to wait and see, but they're having a bit of a uh, interesting line into element A at 4. As they make their way down now to these offset houses at 5A and B. So a time in for Yaroslav Abik and uh, Maduk. They complete the course in 7 minutes and 7 seconds, but no jumping penalty, so 26.8 time. And 67 is their new two-phase total as they slot into 37th place. Found a lovely stride over the Oxa there at 7 for Robert and Tosca del Casnego. So, to the first water. Just a bit of encouragement into element A now, just uh, finding their way to B. No trouble there. A little look down in the water out the other side means they add in a stride at element C, but that doesn't matter because they're clear and uh, kicking on now. On they go to the log ditch at nine. Fence that has rode very well today. And again, a lovely big jump there. As our next rider to join us on course, it will be Matteo Orlandi coming forward with quality in time. Combination brought forward a 37.6 in the dressage. As we are back with Henrik Ordnovic and Zam F. Keeping up this big gallop as they approach the uh, second water combination out on course. Good jump in over element A. Found their line nicely for C. C has caught a couple riders out, but that's not the case there for Hemrick and Zamef. As uh, Matteo Orlandi is underway with quality in time. Matteo Orlandi, a uh, very, very uh, talented young rider. Coming forward with a golden quality in time. They had huge success last year here at Monte Libretti when uh, they were taking part in the uh, Young Rider Europeans. They could 
They finished uh, fourth individually and were part of the team that took team gold. What a wonderful feeling that must have been winning a gold medal as a team at your home at Europeans. A real, real star of the future. Not only do they have all their accolades from their uh, young rider Europeans, they've had a couple of top 10 finishes at the four star level. So a combination we'll be keeping an eye on for uh, future Italian teams. 37.6, like we say, was their dressage score. They're sat in 21st after the first phase. But a quick cross country round today could move them quite away up the leaderboard because time is tight. Six minutes at optimum time. Still haven't had a rider inside it. Time in for Robert Haller and uh, Tosca de Castnego. No jumping, 6 minutes 29 seconds it took them to complete the course. So that's 11.6 time penalties. 47.1 their two face scoring into 30th. <laughs> Well, they saw a good line, a uh, good stride for the uh, Oxer, but you heard the rattle there and Matteo looking back to check to see, has he activated those MIMS clips? Has he picked up an 11 penalty? Now, we can't see, but I assume that uh, it stayed in place. As they head down to this uh, first water complex. No trouble over all three elements there. Looking uh, very experienced indeed as they head down now to the uh, log ditch at nine. No trouble there, able to shave off a second or two round the corner as they head down to the combination at 10, this rail ditch and then out over the well and taking quite an inside line to the rail. You can see from the hoof prints, not many riders have taken that line. Well, it pays off, they're clear and will have saved them a few seconds. So some smart riding there from uh, Matteo Orlandi, quality in time. Obviously knows his horse very well, knows what he can get away with, knows how to ride and knows how to ride for the best footing as well into element A at the second water. Nicely over B, got to get that line for C. Easily done. We'll keep an eye on their time when they come in because like we say, nobody has made the time yet. Well, what will we see from uh, our next rider coming forward for France? Laura de Artola and Seven de Nouvelle. Keen over the uh, first two fences, combination sat in 18th overnight. 37 was their dressage score. Seven de Nouvelle and HN, this uh, gelding owned by Christophe de Taylor. And what a big jump over the brush at three. See how they will cope with this first combination up at four. Still as bold as ever over the first. Very nicely over all three elements there not hanging around at all as they make their way down to the offset houses at five. Well, 
Well, the fastest round we've had of the day was Luc Chateau, fellow French rider. He completed the course six minutes and four seconds, so 1.6 time penalties. Just four seconds off that optimum time. What will we see from uh, this uh, lady out on course? French are known to be fast riders, and she's uh, really putting her foot down on the accelerator. Now just saying whoa and listen before this oxa with those MIMS clips. That's it. Nicely done. Off they go again towards the first water. Time in for Henrik Ordnovic and Zam F. No jumping penalties. 6 minutes 31 seconds it took them to complete the course. And that's 12.4 time penalties to add. 49.3 the two phase score. So that means they'll be currently in 32nd position. She did well there at Element C. Elora de Artola. Making that happen at that third element there, Seven de Nouvelle, just losing a bit of balance with the ground. But she said, head up, let's go, and uh, found that third element. And straight away back into their stride over the uh, open ditch. very swiftly through the combination there at 10 the rail ditch and well finding their way round now to the uh, second water on course this uh, big suspended log in at element A neat jump over that find their line for the snail nicely done and out over element C not a waver in sight. Great to see to the top end of the course now. Riders can really uh, push on along this section, especially when they come back down the other side towards the uh, latter stages, down towards fence 15. Lovely long galloping stretches down there. But this huge uh, red and white box is next for them. They just skip on over. Now for the triple bar. Whilst they're at the top end of the course, we welcome our latest starter, Ludovica Manzoli for Italy. Chocolat de Ligne. 42.6. Yeah, was their dressage score. 39th was where they sat after dressage. Ludovica, who uh, took on the ride last year from Simone Sordi. And they finished their first season together at the uh, four star short here in Montlebretti. To place 22nd. Carefully off that step. And then uh, over element C there for the first combination on course at fence four. So down they head to this open ditch and brush at uh, 6. Sat back just before, found a beautiful stride and a lovely jump. Over what can look quite an imposing jump. A bit more of a rider frightener than anything. They got in deep to that ox up. We've seen a couple getting quite close there but they're clear. Down they head to the first of the waters. 
Very nicely over element A. Keeping the positivity over B. Now, uh, wiggling through, and unfortunately, another one to be caught out by element C there. We uh, have seen a few riders have trouble there, and she's just decided, Ludovica Manzoli, to uh, not continue. She's decided to retire and save Chocolate Linea for another day. So, unfortunately, we won't see them at show jump tomorrow. So as they walk back to the stables, I'll see if I can get a time for you for uh, Matteo Orlandi, the young superstar, coming up through the uh, Italian ranks. We saw him take some uh, rather economical lines out on cross country. So we'll see if that has uh, paid off when it comes to time. So, Matteo Orlandi, time is in clear. Six minutes, 34 seconds. So, 13.6 time. 51.2 is the total in there. Into 32nd as it stands. However, we're joined by a new rider coming forward for Spain. It is Marcel Piripato and Volney de Tribal. Combination who posted a 39.6 in the dressage yesterday, sat in 28th overnight. They completed three Nations Cup competitions last year with their best result coming from Montalabretti here last year where they placed 19th. All very smoothly through the uh, first combination on course at fence four. And there we just see Ludovica Manzoli, Chocolate Linea, making their way back to the lorry park after running into trouble at the first water. As Marcel heads down to uh, these offset houses. And uh, got the two strides between them, onward bound to this open ditch brush. And a huge jump there, very nicely done indeed. <laughs> Well, a time is in for uh, Elora de Artola. We thought that she was going fast, as she was indeed with 7 de Nouvelu NHN. Well, uh, complete the course 6 minutes 4 seconds, so joint fastest time of the day. Just 1.6 time penalties to add. 38.6 is their two-phase score. Into 10th place. And we still have a few riders to go, so... Uh, a very, very smart round indeed for Alora de Artola. One that I'm sure she'll be very chuffed with. Our two French riders currently the fastest of the day. The French are known for being fast and they're certainly living up to that today. Well, unfortunately, another one there caught out by element C at the first water. Marcel come round for a second attempt with Volney de Tribal. No trouble on the second time of asking. It's also sometimes just take a second or two to read these fences. And that's just when the 20 penalties can be easily picked up. 
So carrying that 20 with them, they head down to the uh, log ditch at nine. No trouble there. Another combination fast approaching as they're round to uh, 10, this rail over ditch and then out to the wishing well. Having a bit of a uh, stumble over the ditch. They were clear, but it was a little bit of a uh, miscommunication over that ditch. But they managed to sit up and keep kicking and made it to the well on the way out. How will they cope now with the second water, this big log in? No trouble at all. Very bold on element A. Found element B, now another accuracy test on the way out. Well, they took the flag, and that will be down to the fence judges to decide if 15 penalties is awarded there or not. There's another rider coming forward for Italy. Andrea Dosimo joins us now with uh, Trade Wins Alfredo, owned by Andrea himself. 44.3 was their dressage score. They're sat in 40th overnight. A combination we'll be keeping an eye on today because they have a very, very good cross-country record from 18 international cross-country starts. They jumped clear 17 times. So let's see how they cope with Eric Winter's track here at uh, Monte Libretti. It's always great to see these fantastic cross-country horses out in their element. Down they head to these offset houses at five. And you can just see trade winds and Alfredo's ears pricked. He could see the line himself and off they went. The horse that clearly loves this phase. No better feeling as a rider to be on a horse that uh, loves to run and gallop and jump. Makes looking at some of these big fences a little less imposing when you know you've got a horse that uh, loves it as much as you do. Very nicely of that oxer at seven. Round they go to the first water on this course. Down they had just finding a bit of balance before they uh, approach this first brush box. Very confidently over that first element is pricked, eyes on B. How will they cope with C? This has caught a couple of people out and, oh, unfortunately it looks like it may have caught them out. Not quite making it through the red and white flags. So Andrea Dossimo, trade wins Alfredo. Um, looks like they uh, may be deciding to retire. Andrea Dossimo, trade wins Alfredo, retires after the refusal of number eight. Yeah, looks like Andrea saving trade wins Alfredo for another day. That element C really is catching out a few of our uh, riders today. It is on quite an angle. So unfortunately not to be there for Andrea Dossimo, trade wins Alfredo. Well, we're into our uh, final 10 riders coming forwards here in this uh, Monte Libretti Nations Cup four-star short. And on we go to Roberto Riganelli and Jakarta de Mansi. 
40.2 their uh, dressage score, 34th overnight. Jakarta de Mansi, uh, owned by Berktovitz Jean Mitchell. As they head up to the first combination on course. Have a combination who have been together for uh, a very long time since the start of this mayor's international career. They came up through the junior and young rider ranks together. So they've clearly formed a superb partnership to be now at the uh, four star level. Heading down to fence five, Roberto and Jakarta de Mansi. Those offset houses have rode very well indeed. And they're onward bound now to this uh, open ditch at six. A big kick as uh, they saw their stride there. And a huge jump over the open ditch find their line now round to this big oxer very big wide square oxer has jumped well so far today they saw a good stride still nobody inside the optimum time of six minutes Six minutes is the optimum time. Closest we've had is uh, two of our French riders. 1.6 time penalties, so that's four seconds over the optimum time. Well, very swiftly over the first two elements. As straight as a die out over sea there for Roberto Riganelli, Jakarta de Mansi. Superb job indeed. Round they go now to this uh, log ditch at nine. Skip on over that. Take a tight turn, trying to save the seconds at this four star short level. It can be uh, hard to uh, make the time. These fences come up thick and fast. 30 jumping efforts, but only 17 numbered fences. So that means there's uh, very little time to think before you're approaching your next combination. You've got to be riding forwards, but thinking fast. Big jump into element A there at this second water over the snail and found element C very nicely indeed. Riding up to this uh, far end of the course, as Sarah Clark is underway, Casalia S. This uh, young mare of Sarah's, first time at the uh, four-star level. Just an eight-year-old. The pair were at the seven-year-old World Championships in Le Leon d'Angers last year. Have made that step up to the four-star level here at Montelabretti. Started well indeed with 40.1 as their dressage score in 30th overnight. And Sarah, of course, who 
made the very brave move back in 2022 when she sold some of her horses and decided to make the trip over to the UK to compete her other horse LV Bally Jeans at Burley Five Star. But uh, it's a long old trip from Australia over to the UK so she used up all her funds to get there and had no idea if and how or when she was going to get home. So uh, managed to get this lovely young mare brought out to the UK and she's stayed there since with LV Bally Jeans, her five star horse. Lovely jump over the uh, open ditch there at six. So she's been out in the UK for a few years now. Completed Burley again last year. I'm sure she'll have her eyes on a few more five stars in uh, 2024 with LV Balu Jeans. But with this exciting young mare coming through as well, she really is creating a very nice string of horses. And down she heads to the first water. Good over at element A. And well ridden out over C. Like we say, the fence that has caught quite a few people out, but not Sarah Clark. Oh, Gasilias. This mare looking very keen indeed round the cross country. Just as I say that, have a little bit of a green moment at the uh, at the log over the ditch there. But uh, Sarah riding very positively, making it happen. Say, come on, let's go. And they are clear. Sometimes cross country riding is just about making it happen. As long as you're between the red and white flags, that's what counts. Superb job there from Sarah. Through the uh, combination at ten. Onward bound now to this second water with this big imposing hanging log on the way in. Sarah just sitting back, keeping her head up. And no trouble at all over the log. Skipping on over the snail in the middle. So looking like a, a good start there for Sarah Clark as on we go to Gonzalo Velasco Botin, Starman. Another four star first timer in uh, Starman. 41.2 was their dressage score. Sat in 36th after the uh, first phase. Gonzalo, who not only events but works as an investment analyst. making their way up to this hedge at fence three. First three fences of the course just to help the horses and riders get into the flow, get into their rhythm. And then it's this first combination at four. Cautiously off the step, but they are off and clear and flying over element C. And on they head down to these offset houses at five. A little bit tight to the first, meaning they add a stride between the two and a pat down the neck to say, uh, well done, thank you very much. From Gonzalo to Starman. And a little bit of hesitation as they uh, clear the open ditch there at six. Just having a little bit of a look. Hopefully they regain a bit of confidence over the next few fences because there's another open ditch uh, fast approaching at fence nine.
So round my head to the first water. Element A proves no trouble. Lovely shot over that. You can see they're trying a while off for B. And very straight out over C. And element C that has caused a few issues today. No trouble at all there for uh, Gonzalo and Starman. Like we say, Starman's first time at the uh, four star level. And uh, having a bit of a look again down into that ditch at nine. Just a little bit of greenness coming through. But looking very confident through the combination there at 10, that rail ditch and out over the well. Doing a super job so far around the head to this second water. Bold jump in. And unfortunately, just uh, drifting to the left there and uh, ducking out. So that's 20 penalties at element C. So it looks like they uh, are going to come round for a second attempt. Eyes oh, locked on to that element already. Well, we'll see how that second attempt pans out for them. But uh, now it's the turn of Susanna Bordoni. Coming forward with Imperial van der Holtakers. Combination who posted a very smart 32.2 yesterday in the dressage, sat in seventh overnight. So a fast round out here today could be very, very useful. From our completed scores, it's Benjamin Massey, who uh, is out in front with Figaro Fomroy, 35. French have had a superb day at the office so far. It's Benjamin Massey's out in front, Maxime Livio in second on our completed scores, Esteban Benitez Ballet in third as it stands. but. Uh, we're into our final few horses. And it still could uh, all change there. Very nicely over the offset houses at five. For Susanna. Susanna, of course, incredibly experienced. A great member of the uh, Italian team. Represented Italy. That's multiple European Championships, World Championships, three Olympics. But uh, not only in eventing, also represented Italy in dressage at the European Championships 2009 and 2011. Nation who took sixth place in the uh, Nations Cup at Avanche last year. So let's see if all their experience can uh, come through on oh, cross country day here at Monte Libretti. No one yet to make that time of six minutes. But if she could, it would rocket her right up the leaderboard. Did well at that element C there. Looked like there was a moment of hesitation, but she really made it happen. And that's her experience shining through. As uh, Gonzalo Blaskin-Bottin, Starman... They uh, cross the finish line to complete their round. The uh, four star first timers there. It's up to the second water now for Susanna. 
Oh, unfortunately getting a little bit close to that element A and taking a tumble. So unfortunately it does mean that they will not be able to continue on in the competition. And we really do hope she's okay. Great to see her back up on her feet. What a shame. Just left a leg at that first element, which unfortunately tipped them up. Well, so glad to see her back up on her feet. As we are now joined by the leader after dressage. So this is a very, very important round for Italy. Evelina Batoli, Fiji de Melis. The only rider to break that uh, sub-30 barrier. 29.9 was their dressage score. Entered into the lead late on yesterday in the dressage and what a beautiful test it was indeed. Evelina and uh, Fiji de Melise, a very experienced combination. They were top 25 at the European Championships last year. And actually, last year was a fantastic run for them. From uh, five of... Uh, they had five runs. And they were top three in three of them. So uh, a very, very successful 2023. And 2024 is starting in a similar manner, leading after the dressage. Let's see if she can stay there on cross country. Evelina, who uh, you'll notice rides in a uniform, as do many of the other Italian riders. She rides in the... Uh, Police uniform. So round she heads to this oxa. Very nicely done. The round's looking good so far at the start. So, our current leader, having completed cross country, Benjamin Massey, Figaro Fomroy, 35. Evelina Batoli, currently on 29.9 after dressage. So, can afford only 5.1 penalties. Well, that would be 12 seconds over the optimum time. 12 seconds would give a 4.8 time penalty. She can't be 13. 13 seconds would give her 5.2, and that means she would go behind Benjamin Massey. So, no more than 12 seconds over the optimum time. So she has a bit of a window. However, she's a competitive lady, and uh, I'm sure she'll be looking to do her absolute best. Very boldly over the uh, rail there at 9, round to this combination at 10. Very smooth indeed through that triple combination. Time in for uh, Sarah Clark and uh, Cassilia S. Unfortunately, picking up a 15 penalties at 15B. That's on the way home. There are some uh, skinny corners. A few people who've picked up a 15 penalties there. But not a bad first four-star cross-country for this young mare. Seven minutes and one second, Sarah. Not going for the time, just looking to educate this mare. So a total of 39.4 penalties from cross-country. 79.5 there at total score. Well, on we go now. Another rider for Italy, Mattia Luciani. Leopold K, second ride, I believe, of the day for uh, Mattia. This one earlier on with uh, Cantalotto. This time Leopold K comes forwards. 46.2 was their dressage score, so 42nd overnight. 
So dressage isn't their favourite phase, but uh, this is where they shine on the cross country. Very, very good cross country horse. They only had one cross country jumping penalty in their international career, which was an 11 penalties at Strayom last year. Now, 11 penalties, as we know, that's when the um, combination activate one of the uh, MIMS pin devices, MIMS clips. So um, that's where that 11 penalties will have come from. But other than that, so far, they have jumped clears. Let's hope that streak continues on today. They were top 25 at Stragom Nations Cup last year. Got the two strides beautifully there in those offset houses at five. Mattia spent most of the 2017 and 2018 winter season in Germany training alongside Bettina Hoy. Leopold K looking very keen in this uh, early stages of the course. Down they head to the first of the waters. So, finding their line for element A. Lovely jump in. It's quick footwork as they're through the water. Over B. Eyes set on C. Very nicely out over that third element. Never in doubt of a waiver or anything like that. Eyes were locked on early on. Down they head to this... Uh, log ditch at nine well ridden just looking for that uh, footing that's not so deep and round they go to this combination at ten this rail ditch well just skipping on over all three elements making that look very effortless indeed This ease and smoothness in this cross country round is very, very impressive. Up they go to the top end of the course. Mattia Luciani and Leopold K, owned by the uh, Silver Oak Real Estate Co Company. To this red and white box at the top here. Very, very wide box. No troubles there. Swing right handed back on themselves to a triple bar. But uh, as they're at the top end of the course, Esteban Benitez Ballet is out with his second ride of the day. Escara GP. Now, Esteban has had a, a very successful start to this competition. They're in fifth place overnight with a very smart score of 32 from the first phase. But Esteban also sat in sixth place as it stands with his previous ride, Uttara AA35-1. He was clear previously, just seven seconds over the optimum time. What can he do with his second ride here today? Escara GP. Combination who had a fantastic season last year. Only outside the top ten once at the four star level. But Esteban really has a superb string of horses at the moment. Really, really competitive and looking great for Team Spain. Yes, 
artist man who rides for Spain in 2016, relocated from Spain to Germany to work as a coach. There's a lovely jump over that oxa there at seven. Down they head to that first water. This the man just uh, looking down. Looks like he's doing something to his stirrup. Just maybe trying to rejig his uh, feet in the stirrups where they're sat, but that's now no longer a problem. And their eyes are set on element A. Beautifully in, boldly through that water. Found their line out over sea very easily indeed. So Esteban could have uh, two in the top ten overnight. Well, that would be a very, very successful place to be after two phases. Saw a lovely shot over that log ditch at nine. Round my head, two ten. This rail ditch and uh, well. Very good for all three elements, taking that inside line. We've seen a couple people just shave off a second or two through that combination. That's when you really know you can trust your horse and uh, choose that slightly uh, tighter angle. However, they've chosen to stay out a bit more for this first element at the water, making sure they get a good jump in over the snail. And oh, unfortunately, just not finding that line to element C. They looked like they were having a bit of a negotiation beforehand and meant that they didn't quite meet element C where they would have liked. So that is an unfortunate 20 penalties picked up on the cards. And they come round for a second attempt. Well, Fabio Fanesiotti joins us, another rider with a second ride, and this time he's aboard Sutico George. Sudeke George and uh, Fabio Fanatiotti, regulars at uh, these Nation Cups competitions. This is their ninth Nation Cup appearance. Combination who uh, come forward with a 39.4 from the first phase, sat in 27th overnight. Taking a long gallop up now to fence three, this big beautiful hedge box. A lovely jump over that. Now come round to their uh, first combination on course at fence four. Very, very well so far. Had a little bit of a look, but they were nicely off the step and out over element C. So we have a time in for uh, Gonzalo Blasco Botton, star man who we saw earlier on. They uh, picked up 40 jumping penalties. They had that one refusal at uh, 11C. That's uh, the second water. And then they did have a run out at 15C. So that means uh, that they have a total cross country penalty of 73.2 and into uh, 33rd overnight. Having a little bit of a uh, look into the ditch, got a bit close, but they were clear there for uh, Sutico George and Fabio. Onward bound they head now, taking that turn round to the Oxa at seven. Oh, well, they saw a lovely shot there. Well, we also have a time in for our overnight leader, Evelina Bertoli, Fiji de Melise. Well, uh, she jumped clear, but unfortunately uh, 
took her time to 6 minutes 49 seconds means 19.6 time penalty. She drops down to uh, 23rd place with a two-phase total of 49... 49.5, I should say, so into 23rd. So that means overnight our leader will be for France. There's been a real shake-up in the leaderboard today. Benjamin Massey, Figaro Fomroy, will lead overnight on that score of 35. But hot on his heels, Maxime Livio, fellow uh, French rider with Vegas de Besson, 35.6. And then in third, it will be Esteban Ballet, no, Benitez Ballet, I should say, and Uterra 39 on a score of 36.6. So that's the top three as it stands. Three riders left to go. And it's looking good so far for uh, Fabio Sutico Georges. Bit closer, element B there at the second water, but found their line out over C. So, uh, as we saw earlier on, Esteban Benitez Valley with his other horse, Ascara GP, did decide to retire at the uh, second water. We saw them have their first refusal, but they did decide to uh, save themselves for another day. As to our final two riders, the penultimate rider on course now, Carlos Diaz Fernandez, Otto de Desi. Second ride again for Carlos Diaz Fernandez. Was uh, out earlier on with uh, Tahe. And had a very good round on Tahe. Jumped uh, clear just 17 seconds over the time. So uh, they're in fifth place overnight. Great start to the year so far for uh, Carlos. Well, Otto Ade de Zeke. 38.7 was the dressage score. They were 25th overnight. Galloping now down to uh, these offset houses at five. Just an eight year old. And this is just their second time at the four star level. They stepped up but last year. Got the two between the two houses. The horse has uh, worked his way up through the levels. Very fast, just eight years old. Started their international career back in 2022. Looking confident over the uh, first few fences here in Montalabretti. Just trying to lift the head a little bit as they head round to the uh, Oxer at seven. Just get him back on his hocks. And a lovely jump there. So Carlos, like we say, has been out uh, earlier on today with his other ride. These riders just get a feel of the course once they've been out once and uh, can help them especially if they're coming out with their younger horses later on in the afternoon make decisions as to what they feel will be best for these young horses because it's all just part of their education here we see him taking an inside line to element A just for that better footing where a few horses have been round here now it's just starting to dig up a little bit and done very well at that element C. There was a little wave, a little bit of hesitation from Ottawa did as Carlos said, no, we're going, and off they went. Really showing the connection between this uh, partnership. And nicely over that uh, open ditch. Nicely through the uh, combination there at 10. Again, later on in the day, these riders just picking what footing they feel be best for these horses.
confident jump over element A. No trouble over the snail. Now, this has caused a few issues today, but uh, that's not the case there for uh, Carlos and Ottawa de Zeke. Looking very confident taking that uh, skinny brush on an angle out over element C to the top end of the course. This very large brush box. And they skip on over that like it's just a 90 centimetre fence. Well, final rider coming forwards in this uh, Mont Libretti Nations Cup four star cross country. It is Rafael Manfred Lozano and uh, Cruiswan EBZ. Another four star first timer here in Cruiswan EBZ. Rafael. No trouble over the first three fences. Round they go to the combination at fence four. Just a uh, ten-year-old gelding. Has run quite lightly internationally. Only had four international runs, but uh, is a good jumper. And here to tackle the first four-star. Forty point one was their dressage score, sat in thirty second overnight. Getting in close to that element A, but really pushing and got those two strides out nicely the other side. Time in for Fabio Fanisiotti Sutico George. No jumping penalty, six minutes forty nine seconds, so uh, 49 seconds over that optimum time is 19.6 time penalties, 59 the two-phase score, and into 28th position. So a good start so far for Raphael and Cruiswani BZ. Down they go to the first water. A little bit of a hesitant jump, but a good jump over the uh, element A over B. Now, how will they cope with this element C? No trouble out over C and onward bound now to uh, this log ditch at nine. So far, so good for this horse's first time at the level. And very economically through the combination there at 10, saving every second that they can. And up to this second water. And so smooth through all three elements. That final element has caused a few issues throughout the day, but that's not the case for our final rider, Rafael Lozano and Cruz Swan EBZ. Looking very confident as they head to the top end of the course. We'll wait for them to come back into this final half, but over this very large table cruise on over that and take that turn back towards home towards this triple bar at 13a 
skip on over that to the skinny it beat. Looking very, very confident for their first time at the level. Really, really settling into the course now. Now just a few fences left for them. 17 numbered fences on this track. 30 jumping efforts. Now this is the area where they can have a good old gallop. Lovely long stretch of grass for these uh, riders to really open these horses up before they head into the final sections of this course. Iron up these uh, white gates here. No trouble at all. Round to the uh, final combination at 15 is these angles that a few people have picked up at 15 penalties at well the time's in for Carlos Diaz Fernandez Ottawa de Zig no jumping penalties 39 seconds over that optimum time so 15.6 54.3 will be their final score and that puts them into 24th at the moment well incredibly straight over those uh, corners like we say where a few people have picked up a 15 penalties for a missed flag there Rafael Lozano will be absolutely over the moon with this young horse if they can uh, just pop this final fence to complete their first time at the uh, four star level what a fantastic start to their uh, four-star career. Now we will uh, wait for a time to be confirmed for our uh, final competitor. But what a day of cross-country we have had around uh, this track here at Mons Libretti, designed by uh, Eric Winter. Jumped very, very well indeed, but nobody made that optimum time of six minutes. The closest we had was uh, from our two French riders who uh, were just four seconds over that optimum time. That was Elora de Artola. And uh, then of course it was uh, Benjamin Massey. So a fantastic day of competition here at Monte Libretti. Real shake up in the leaderboard from that cross country because like we say no one inside that optimum time. A few 15 penalties picked up and a few run outs. A lot of technical questions out on this course. But of course still all to play for because we'll be back tomorrow with our show jumping. As it stands I'll give you the top five individually overnight. Benjamin Massey out in front with Figaro Fomroy. On a score of 35, close behind fellow uh, Frenchman Maxime Livio, Vigas de Besson. On a score of 35.6, so no room for error at all tomorrow in the show jumping. Great day at the office for Esteban Banitas Valle, Utara AA 35-1. Combination who led the uh, dressage on the first day for a large chunk. They move to third now after being 11th after dressage on 36.6, a two phase score. Emiliano Portali, Scuderia 1918 future. They've stayed where they were after dressage in fourth place, 37.3 is their two phase score. Into fifth, another one for Spain, Carlos Diaz Fernandez and Tahe CP2110. Combination who did lead the dressage for probably 90% of it until uh, at the back end of yesterday. So they're in fifth with 37.3. That's the uh, top five as it stands. And in fact, I believe we uh, may have had a time come in for our final rider of the day. We have indeed Rafael Lozano. 
complete the course 6 minutes 55 to 22 seconds over the optimum time so not a bad first round four star there for Cruisewan EBZ so that concludes our cross country day of action here at Monte Libretti Nations Cup the French out in front individually a 1-2 actually as it stands going into show jumping Spain in third individually of Esteban and Benitez Ballet so we hope you join us again tomorrow on FEI.TV for a uh, full day of show jumping action. Hope you've enjoyed all the coverage. I'm Rosie Russell taking you through all four days of action here at the Montalabretti FEI Nations Cup. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for the show jumping.